and welcome to the final full week of the bookathon. So I cannot believe that we are in the final full week already. Where has the time gone? That adult high fantasy last week really stole all <laughs> that time away from me. So this week I'm pretty much just going to be reading all of the books that I have left with the exception of the Wicked Villain series because I'm going to try and fit those three books or at least start the last book before the end of the first four days of next week. That was really confusing but you get what I mean I'm doing a wicked villains vlog next week so last night I started Morning Star by Pierce Brown, which as you guys all know is the book that I most wanted to read this month and I'm so so excited to have finally started it. I only read 52 pages last night, I mean I actually had nothing on last night. I just did not do a whole ton of reading but I'm this far into it and it is just like already so so exciting. So this is the final book in the core Red Rising trilogy and Red Rising is an adult sci-fi story that has a little bit of a martial fantasy plot and also a dystopian uprising plot but we are following a guy called Darrow who is a red and in this universe reds are at the bottom of a caste system where golds are at the top and the reds believe that they're mining for this valuable substance called helium 3 and the reason they think they're doing this is so that humanity can terraform the planets and escape the dying planet earth however after darrow's wife orchestrates her own capture and execution to make herself into a martyr and spur darrow into action darrow goes to the surface of the planet mars and discovers that the planets have already been terraformed and the reds are quite literally being kept in the dark so with the help of a rebellion Darrow infiltrates the golds planning to take them down from the inside. Golden Sun which is the se sequel to Red Rising my favorite book of the year I cannot stop thinking about that book this series is like it's really fast paced but we have this really moody character in Darrow who's like thinking about the cause but trying to like reconcile all of the things that he knows about the golds from his life as a red and how he's experiencing the golds as a gold himself as he's climbing through the ranks trying to tear them apart from the inside and we also have so much like Shakespearean style drama with like really dramatic speeches a lot of this is um inspired by the Roman Empire as well so we have a lot of of blood feuds and duels to the death and big high action scenes. Pierce Brown is a little bit brutal in this series he will just kill characters and the end well all of golden sun was dramatic and explosive but the end oh my fucking god so i am so excited to be reading this and it has already been really dramatic in fact the place that i left it we've already had some character deaths and i think that the next chapter like where we i kind of left it on a little bit of a cliffhanger where something terrible has happened but we don't really know the full extent of it yet and i'm excited to continue and be in pain some people a few people Aaron from Boats and Busy being one of them is convinced that I'm gonna cry <laughs> at the end of this and I don't think I'm ready but I'm so so excited because I haven't had a five star read this month I've read six books in total I want to get through another three this week and another three <laughs> next week wow that's gonna be 12 books yikes those are my reading plans for the foreseeable future I have two sets of sprints this week I think I'm doing Thursday and then either Friday or Saturday. I think I'm also joining Steph's Patreon sprints tomorrow so I'm gonna have lots of reading time in terms of that and now I'm gonna go and pack some orders. I'm packing about half of them today and while I do that I think I'm gonna watch YouTube today. I want to watch YouTube not Vampire Diaries but before I get into YouTube I'm going to catch up on Dancing with the Stars, which I've never watched before, literally have no interest, but my favourite Peloton instructor, Cody Rigsby, is a contestant on this year's Dancing with the Stars, so I'm pretty much just going to watch like the opening um, number and his performance, and I may watch, she called Melora Hardin, um, who plays Jan in The Office, I may watch hers as well. Tides came to the house. I feel like you guys that there's two books that I am reading. I 
Good afternoon. Curtis is out today and honestly, I am just vibing. I finished work, like everything I needed to do today pretty early. Just because today's normally a filming day, but I already filmed my video, so all I had to do was edit it. And I should probably watch that back and get that scheduled. I am gonna have like two busy-ish work days tomorrow, especially tomorrow actually, and Friday, but for today, pretty chill. So I've already worked out, it's only, it's almost 4 p.m. and I've sat and dithered around, wondering whether I should go out and get something for dinner because HelloFresh is only delivered on Friday. But I think I'm gonna wait for Curtis to come home and we're gonna decide what we're gonna do. But for now, I'm just gonna sit and read Morningstar. I'm 94 pages into it. I'm really enjoying it so far. I am adoring Severo and I'm adoring Ragnar and I'm adoring everybody's reactions to Ragnar who is just the sweetest bean. I love him so much. So yeah, I'm gonna listen to this for an hour until Curtis comes back, sort out food and I'm just really chill at the minute and I don't know why. I don't know how. Like I'm, I'm still stressy when I'm working but my overall vibe is just chill and... I'm just gonna roll with it while it lasts, I guess, because it never lasts long. Today is not going well. We were supposed to be going out today. Curtis wanted to do something, go to the beach again, or like go for a day out. So last night we were looking at places to go. We decided we wanted to go to Harrogate because we've been thinking about it for some time, have never been. Wondered if we had time because Curtis still had a little bit of work to do in the morning, but that was sorted and planned. Um, I had a little bit of a dip last night as well, which was just not, not a great time. We ended up waking up a little bit later than usual today. Nothing super dramatic. We, I got up at half nine instead of half eight, but my HelloFresh delivery comes on a Friday and it does normally come at about 9.30. It's coming between half 12 and half one. And then the roof guys also turned up just past half past nine. So now I guess we're not going anywhere. And I don't know what to do because there's work that I could do, but I'm very much like, uh, I plan to have this time off so it's hard for me to readjust to now being like you gotta work today so i put on um a pretty shirt and some makeup for no reason other than to make myself feel better i don't think it's working and now i'm getting kind of sweaty so the shirt might have to come off but i'm still reading morning star and i might be having a fortnight session with ryan tonight which means that i will get a lot of reading done and i kind of want to have that finished today i'm on page 324 or something like that so i have around 200 pages of that left. I think I still have like eight and a half hours left of the audiobook and I've been listening to it on two times speed, but that is still four hours. And then the reason that I wanted to go out today specifically, and I'm so upset that we can't go out today specifically, is because I don't think I'm gonna be able to have a day off for the next nine days. So yay me. But in terms of morning start, actually, I am still really, really enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it as much as I enjoyed Golden Sun, and that is nothing, like it's not because it's worse than Golden Sun. I guess it just doesn't feel as dramatic and we have had a couple of sad moments that I haven't thought were too sad like they were sad but I didn't cry or anything about them and of, when I went into this book of all of the characters that could die and would emotionally upset me I was like okay so these characters I really care about so if anything happened to them then I would be really upset but then things have been happening to them and I'm just unaffected, but I am still really, really enjoying it. And I'm really excited to continue, but I'm also savoring it. I've just had like, I'm just being chill. I'm taking it easy with reading. I'm not pushing myself to read 200 pages. If there's something else that I can do, like for example, have a day out or play Fortnite with Ryan, who I haven't played Fortnite with for ages because he's been really busy, then um, I'm gonna do that. But I have a box here and I think that this is an Etsy order that I placed. I'm gonna try and crack it open. It has been packaged very securely. But this, I believe, is from Jess. And Jess is a subscriber of mine and also one of my patrons. And she very sadly lost her cat earlier this week and put a sale on in her Etsy store, which was 20% off if you spend, was it 15 pounds? Jess essentially put the sale on to pay for the cremation fee 
Louise after losing her car and I was like let's just buy a whole ton of stuff I will of course link Jessie's shop in my description box as well and Jess makes resin things so I bought myself some cool little resin things so we have a little card that says thank you for supporting my small business and a little message from Jess on the back and I think I ordered did I order four things or five let us see I ordered a few resin bookmarks oh I ordered five because we have three resin bookmarks here these are really pretty I ordered this one which has little witchy symbols in it and a little purple tassel i also ordered this halloweeny one which i love and i also ordered myself a little spacey one i love resin and resin art so much it's super super pretty but i really like these and then i ordered a couple more things let's get the biggest one first i ordered a trinket dish i can't oh i got the spacey one so we have little planets in there it's really pretty and um, because it's resin it's like super durable we also have the glitter and stuff around the rim here and the last thing that i ordered was a little hanging thing and it is a little Ouija board hanging plaque thing which is super cute so thank you so much to Jess for these the packaging was awesome they all arrived safely we also have some sweets in the bottom and I'm very excited I might spend some time figuring out where to hang this to cheer me up because it's blue I feel like it should go in this room but I'm not entirely sure why. I'm running out of wall space real quick in here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to, I do have a few bits of work that I can do that's not too taxing, like admin stuff, my Patreon poll, and then the next part of the Buffy watch along. So I think I'm gonna go and get on with some of that. And I don't know, I'm just gonna see where the day takes me. I guess. Hey, I'm back again. It's been like a minute, but I got a new parcel. I ordered some temporary tattoos from Inkbox because I want a new tattoo. I already have one. I have one here, but I want some on my arms and I do. I really want a half sleeve essentially and i want one of the ones you know that kind of it's not like a full half sleeve it's more like a large tattoo they're typically floral ones that go around this part of your arm and they're like um there's probably a name for them i'll just insert a picture on the screen of the kind of like half sleeve type thing that i want but i don't like flowers i don't want a flower one so i have no idea what i would have but i also would like a shoulder piece you know one of the ones that kind of goes here and then creeps up here a little bit on the same side that I have the half sleeve and I also want um some handwriting either here just above my elbow crease or here and an inside forearm piece on the opposite side to the sleeve possibly essentially I have tons of tattoo ideas but because it's my arms um I'm a little bit more nervous about just booking it in the one on my ribs was fine if I hated it if I didn't like the placement it doesn't matter because nobody ever sees it but these are a little bit more visible so i ordered some from inkbox these are temporary tattoos that last up to two weeks and i'm thinking about i pretty much decided that i am going to book myself in for the script one now i ordered a little script one that says made of magic and i ordered a larger one which was a floral but it's the kind of design that i like with like the triangles and the circles in the background and i got this one for the inside of my arm so essentially i think what i'm going to do actually is go do those little bits of admin that i said i'm going to do and then we're going to stick these on and i have the next two weeks to decide whether i like them or like however long they last they're not guaranteed to last a full two weeks but they last one to two weeks but then i have two weeks to decide whether they look good or they don't look good and then i can get myself booked in for a tattoo finally after dithering and moaning and complaining about it for honestly the last 10 years since i've had my last one i mean only in the last five years have i really been able to afford a tattoo but it's definitely something that i've always wanted i always wanted tattoos but then just never i'm just such i can't make decisions to save my life and i'm also terrified of commitment <laughs> in case you know in case you make the wrong decision so i like to not make decisions in case i make a bad one but like and also the thing like it's not the same now but but what if i want to go into a career where you can't have tattoos it's like bitch you work for yourself you've worked for yourself for two years there are no signs that you are going to stop working for yourself for the foreseeable future just get the damn tattoo Found out they tried to shout, but when in doubt, the facade of the sea staring back at me. Each letter.
blood like sheep step foot to sea drowning oh so patiently sand people sit and wait anxiously So they're on. I will say that I messed up the placement on both of them and not a good idea to do both arms at once. I had to lay on my bed with my arms out just letting them do their thing because you have to leave them on for an hour. But um, I'm really a big fan of this one. They will turn black over the next 24 to 36 hours as well but I'm literally obsessed with this although I did put it in the wrong place so like when I turn my arm sideways it's kind of in a weird twisty bit down my arm and Curtis placed that one. And to be fair it did look central when he put it on but I've discovered all sorts of things while I've been doing this about how arms move that I didn't know before. And then this one is very very small and much too far towards that way so like it should be further in towards my body and it's really not but something that I have discovered is that having a little text tattoo there literally not a big deal does not really affect my life at all so um I'm probably gonna book that one in at least as soon as possible but we'll wait and see what they look like when they turn black first well, I've just been reading <laughs> some of morning star and i'm just have i just finished chapter 44 yeah so we're up to chapter 45 now i'm on page 348 and i was going to be playing fortnite at around 10 it's like 9 45 now we're on the verge of a really big battle and i don't know there's like 170 pages left of the book but i don't know if this is like the final big battle because something i've noticed about the pacing in golden sun as well but also definitely in this one it kind of skips out in between so you'll have like i think near the beginning there was like a two month time jump or something after the first like events of the book and it kind of skips between the key points and it does make sense because like they've got a lot going on and that's fine i'm wondering if that's going to impact my emotional involvement in this book though because i don't have those slow moments but it is still like super impactful super dramatic so we'll see but yeah i don't this is going to be a big battle i think we've already had some dramatic setup with characters meeting and shakespearean drama and blood feuds all over again and i'm a little bit scared to go into the next section so i'm leaving it there for now while i play fortnite because i feel like i need to read this battle in one big chunk but i'm just gonna set it to the side for a minute or like a couple of hours and forget that it exists because i don't know if i'm ready like i've been taking my time with this book not because i'm not interested or anything i'm so thoroughly enjoying it when i'm reading it i just i don't really want it to end because part of me really wants to go into um i is it iron gold and dark age but i also don't want to be left waiting for the last book and then have to reread everything especially with the next two books being significantly chunkier so i do think i'm gonna leave it for a while but i just love it so much and i'm really excited for whatever pierce brown releases in the future because i'm just i'm obsessed in 30 minutes i've just filmed my illumicrate unboxing oh my god the illumicrate empire of the vampire is so beautiful but check in on the temporary tattoos they are looking so good this morning really crisp and black i mean they're a little bit fuzzy but just a tiny bit probably due to my wriggling while they were setting the made of magic one as well and they're really cool i really liking them this is the beginning of the end for me but i had a delivery from morphe because i ordered a couple of spooky season lipsticks because um i wanted a real dark one because spooky season so i got this one this one's blackberry i think you guys always ask me what lipsticks i wear as well which is why i'm doing this here but this one is so dark but it is like hey should i swatch oh she's she's dark it's like her can't why did i put that there a really dark purpley brony color i'm excited to try that one but i'm not gonna put that one on today just because it is a little bit dark for casual wear and i think i can't remember if i got a brown or a really dark red what shade is this cheat i think it's like a burgundy and this one is like a real dark it's like a brownie red actually i'm not good at swatching so good job i'm not a makeup youtuber why does it keep focusing on my neck there we go 
that is that one. And I'm actually just gonna put this on. I'll probably regret doing this in the viewfinder. Oh, she dark. I need, I can't do this in a viewfinder. I think that the tip on this is really flat, which is why I'm struggling as well. It's like a wide tip. Oh, we like that. We like that a lot. So those are my lipsticks. I'm 110, 15-ish pages away from the end of Morningstar. Read a couple of chapters this morning. Nothing incredibly drastic happened. Like I'm okay <laughs> at the moment, but I'm a little bit worried about crying on stream soon. But speaking of, I need to set up for the sprints because I'm completely unprepared. And I will check in with you guys probably during the sprints when I finally finish Morningstar. We went a little bit longer so it's now 4 40 and we went longer because everybody was hoping that i would cry during the sprints but i did not but i did finish morning star by ps brown and it is definitely i haven't put it through call file or anything but it's definitely a five star read i'm still invested in this the reason that i didn't cry is not because i'm not invested it's just i don't feel like this is an emotional kind of attachment book for me like when i'm reacting to the things that are happening in here it's more of an oh my god i can't believe he this has happened as opposed to a i am devastated i'm going to cry now kind of thing with this and it is super fast paced as well like throughout golden sun a lot as well but this one especially after we re-establish everything in this one which i'm holding upside down i only just realized after we re-establish everything in this one it kind of pretty much skips from battle to battle as we're coming to the end of the series and jump into the key moments and a lot of things like strategizing and stuff is skipped out in here now this is something that i typically don't love because i like my more slow moving plots i like to know everything but it's just like a different kind of storytelling, you know? The reasons why the strategies are skipped out in here is so that you get that shock factor when you think everyone's gonna die and it's all gonna go horribly wrong and they're all gonna fail. And then it like turns around at last minute because they have this epic strategy and you know that there's a strategy in place, but it's kind of not dwelled upon too much. So while you're wrapped up in the events of what's going on, you kind of forget that they actually do all know what is going on. But um, I still love Darrow, Severo, Ragnar. I also love Victra. I love Cassius. <laughs> I know some of you guys won't love Cassius. I love Cassius. And yeah, I think it was a really good conclusion to the series. I will say that I still think that my favorite book in the series is Golden Sun. I can't really articulate why at this minute. It will always be a standout book to me because while stuff was happening in Red Rising, Red Rising has a very slow setup. Like I didn't love the first half of Red Rising, but in Golden Sun, you truly begin to realize that Pierce Brown is really not pulling any punches. Because by the time you get to Golden Sun, you've established a little bit of a relationship with the characters you know who a lot of them are so when these brutal dramatic things happen you're a lot more shocked whereas in this one you kind of already know that this being the final book in the series it's going to be dynamic it's going to be impactful there's going to be plot twists and deaths left right and center so i was just kind of not as surprised and taken aback when these things were happening but i did really enjoy it i like that we had some repercussions and some casualties in here i really like darrow as a main character because he does horrible things things which sounds a really weird thing to say a lot of the times in fantasy i've just discussed this in sprints but a lot of the times in fantasy you'll have characters who always make the good and right decision they will never cross a line they will never do anything slightly dubious and i know this doesn't happen all the time it's only in some fantasy but the 
they're a paragon of all that is good which just doesn't feel realistic you know how everything just kind of falls into place if you're a good person whereas in here Darrow has to make decisions that aren't great he makes terrible decisions he does some terrible things in order to twist the battle strategies his way or to do something that in the end will bring like great war rewards to the cause even though it is an awful thing and I do really like that about him I just actually really like him as a protagonist and someone to follow he's very very emo, he's deep in his field a lot of the time and yeah I really really loved it. I'm glad that I read it. I'm glad that I didn't rush it as well and took my time with it and audiobooks still top notch um, as somebody who doesn't like audiobooks. The audiobooks for Red Rising are really good. So in terms of prompts actually this one was my chance card for Bacopla Fun. I'm actually going to fill in my spreadsheet and register that in the page tracker in a minute. Don't forget if you are participating in Bacopla Fun to track register all of your pages and books i'll leave the links in my description box and then for the magical readathon this one was on the main path and this one was was for the ash thorn tree which is a book that keeps attempting you so a book that is top of your tbr so at this current point with if you include today or like we'll, we'll say today's a half day um i have five books left to read in five and a half days which is a little bit intimidating um, but at this point I have completed three out of the seven prompts on my main path and I have done two of my character prompts and for Bacoplathon, I've read a four out of my nine books. I truly, truly suck. Um, but the next book I'm going to be picking up tonight is going to be the Buffy reboot volume two, which is called Once Bitten. This is a reboot of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer universe. It's essentially a retelling of the tv show so we still have the same actors portrayed in the art in here i know that the art changes in here and it's not as nice so like the art in the actual comics is not the same as these actual absolutely stunning art pages and i have flipped through this and seen the art and i know what people mean about it not being as good i'm not a huge fan of this style the style i like in comic book art is more essentially saga is my ideal kind of um comic style but actually looking through this it does it seems like there's different artists on different things because this one to show you this top frame looks completely different again and that's more like the style that I like. So the story of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we follow a young girl called Buffy, she's 16, and once in every generation there is a vampire slayer who is tasked to rid the world of evil, and we're following Buffy who is this generation slayer There is only one of them and this has brought the story into modern times so it's not following the exact same plot lines but the core themes are there there are things present in these comics that are not present in the early days of the tv show so right now we'd be in like season one of the tv show but this contains characters that are only introduced in like season seven and like the law firm wolfram and hart from angel which plays a big part in the plot line of angel but angel only starts three seasons into buffy and wolfram and hart are only kind of in the background throughout the first season i loved the first volume of this and how it modernized it and made it into the same kind of thing and everything I loved about it and kept the voices of the character but brought it into 2019 so I'm hoping I'm going to enjoy that but for now at 4 50 I need to start making dinner at some point but I don't know whether I'm going to work out I think what I'm going to do is stretch my legs sort my spreadsheet out maybe get my workout in for the day so that it's done and then make dinner watch tv and I'm also playing Fortnite tonight and of course reading this good morning happy sunday my voice is still a little bit croaky because i've only been at what time is it it's 10 22 i woke up at half nine so i've been up for almost an hour but last night let me just take a sip because i need the caffeine oh yeah that's good coffee today last night i finished buffy volume two and i sadly gave this volume three stars i do really like the story in here and i feel like Jordi belair is still doing a really good job of capturing the voices of the characters so that you can pretty much read them in the voices of the actors who portray them in the show however this volume is really let down by the illustration because while Jordi Belair is bringing the voice to these characters and it's really bringing the text and the speech to life in here the illustrations are not doing the characters justice because they don't even look 
like them like dan mora did such an amazing job and this is like this is xander why does he look like that jenny calendar's in here as well and she just looks like a generic woman with a brown blob. Like there's no distinguishing things that make her look like the actress that played Jenny Calendar in the show. And I know that that's not a, a definite, you know, like you don't need them to look like the actors who played them in a comic. Cause like it's a reimagining of the story. It doesn't have to be a portrayal of the same characters, but because it started off like that with Dan Mora's illustrations, I feel like that does have to be recurring and it does have to continue throughout the entire series. So essentially, Essentially it's like four or five stars for the story, one star for the art. We're already devi deviating away in like big ways from the storyline of the show as well, which at the minute I feel okay about. I'm interested to see how it's going to play out because some of the things are like so far outside the realm of what happened in the show to the point where nothing like that ever happened in the show. So I don't have a prediction of how it's going to play out. But I, I'm going to carry on with the series because I think Dan Mora is on volume three as well. And then I think it changes to a different artist. Not Dan Mora. David Lopez illustrates another volume. And then it changes to a different artist. And I have been Googling all of the artists for um, the show. I mean, look at this. That's supposed to be Drusilla. Just not a big fan, um, but I will continue and hopefully the art will be better. I mean, I believe Dan Mora is a big comic artist, illustrator, guy. So I'm guessing they couldn't keep him on because they think he's also working on a series called Once in Future with, is it Karen Gillian? Karen Gillan. This for the Magical Readathon was in for the prompt. Oh my God, what did I have this in for in the end? Oh, it was the, I can't remember what the name of the prompt is, but it's the one that features supernatural creatures or ghosts or a haunted house or something. And for Bookoplathon, it was in for a community shelf card. And last night I was I have started this technically I'm one chapter in but only because Kurt has picked it up and started reading it to me last night but I am about to read a couple of chapters of this but I have to work today because I'm real I'm not behind at this moment but I am going to be behind um if I don't work today so I'm just going to read a couple of chapters while I drink my coffee but this is the kiss quotient by Helen Huang and it is in my magical readers on TBR to, le to read a standalone because it is the first book in a series of standalones and it is on my book Copley TBR to read a book with disability representation, I believe. So this one is an adult contemporary romance that follows a girl called Stella who is autistic. She's on the autism spectrum and her parents are kind of pressuring her to settle down and get married, but she sucks at dating. And because of this, she hires a male escort to teach her about sex and love and all of that stuff. And I'm guessing that they're gonna like fall in love for realsies. A couple of things about this that have been mentioned in my comments. The first thing is that in the synopsis of this, it says that Stella has Asperger's. Apparently that is a term that is not commonly used anymore. And instead people now say like um, on the autism spectrum as, as opposed to uh, has Asperger's. And the second thing I've received two different kind of like opposing comments on this. I received a comment from a subscriber who said that the autism rep in here is terrible, but I have also received comments that say that the autism rep in here is good. I am not on the spectrum, so I won't be able to say whether the representation is good or not. Um, so I thought I would just let you guys know that there is like opposing things on that about whether the rep is good or not because I know when I'm reading and reviewing this I will be able to say so it's just something to bear in mind if you're thinking of picking this one up. And so I'm just about to play Fortnite but I thought I would give you a little bit of an update on the kiss quotient because I'm currently on page 152 which is halfway through and I'm surprised actually that I've managed to get that far because I've had a live show, I made 60 candles and I've also just done the Buffy watch along. But I've still managed to read almost half of this book. So essentially what's happening in this book is we have Stella who is on the spectrum and she hires Michael to teach her about sex because she's only had sex three times. She doesn't think that she's very good at it. She's never enjoyed it and she wants to learn essentially so she can be more desirable and make relationships work and sex work because she's had no luck in that department so far. So Michael normally has a rule where he has no repeat customers but because he really likes Stella and the first altercation doesn't go well because he realizes like how tense she is and like tries to relax her. So against his better judgment, he agrees to these terms. And throughout the course of their meetups, every Friday they start to develop 
feelings. Now throughout this book, Michael does not know that Stella is autistic. So this leads to like a series of situations that she's put in where she doesn't essentially express her discomfort because she doesn't like people treating her differently or pitying her or making adjustments for her or anything like that. So um, they have a series of like mishaps along the way. And I have to say, like I said earlier, I can't speak for the autism rep in here, whether it's good or not, but I can say that there are elements of this book that are making me really uncomfortable. I mean, I think you're kind of supposed to feel uncomfortable because there's instances in here like where Stella is thrown into big group social situations where um, she's struggling to read the social cues of the people around her and respond accordingly. And there's also like other stimulation and distractions going on around her. But this book, I I'm hoping that it gets better from this point onwards. It's not, see, I don't know whether it is the book or whether it's just me, but in instances like that, where um, Stella's thrown into this big social situation and she's feeling uncomfortable and things aren't going as planned or as she would hope. It's making me feel incredibly anxious because I have had in the past, not too bad now, I'm not great, I'm still quite awkward around people, I'm not the most social person, but I did used to get quite bad social anxiety and experiencing it's kind of like I'm getting secondhand embarrassment but secondhand anxiety where I'm feeling really anxious which I guess is like I said the intended purpose because it's not a comfortable situation for the main character but I don't go into a contemporary romance for anxiety especially one like this that's kind of like a well as far as I've seen it recommended it is like a fluffy rom-com kind of contemporary. So that's not really the desired effect and it wasn't something I was prepared to feel going into this. I will say that so far I do like Michael as a love interest. The description of him is working in terms of it being a romance. Like I do find him incredibly attractive. I think that he's been incredibly sweet in scenes and I do enjoy following Stella as a protagonist as well. I also really like her. This book does also very quickly go into the romantic elements. Like we don't have a whole lot of setup in here. We pretty much have one chapter and then it goes straight into Stella hiring an escort to teach her about sex. So I do like that it goes into that really quickly and the relationship between these two starts to grow from very early on in the book instead of having like a whole ton of setup. But yeah, I'm very pleased with my progress so far today. I am planning on reading a little bit more at some point and if I could get to the page 200 mark then that would be fab. And I will, of course, let you guys know how I feel about this when I'm done or a little bit later on. Um, but fingers crossed we have no more anxiety because I did not sign on for that when I picked up like a fluffy rom-com. My hair, I'm trying to decide if it looks good today or not because I'm going to be filming Bacopoli soon and I don't know whether to straighten it or go curly. I might go curly. I'm digging it. I like it. So last night, I did finish The Kiss Cushion by Helen Huang and the first half did make me feel quite anxious and uncomfortable in multiple places throughout this, which I just wasn't expecting from a romance. Essentially with this, I kind of don't get the point of why the author had to make Stella be so anxious herself like why she had to put her into such uncomfortable positions because we know that she's autistic like we already know that it's not like Helen Huang has to prove that to us which makes it feel like it has a bit of a contemporary edge to it like a contemporary angle in this book just because I just feel like it was like I read Eve Brown not long ago and there's autism in that but not like that didn't make me feel uncomfortable this really made me quite anxious throughout the first half of it now that being said it did end up getting four stars when I put it through core pile it is quite a low four stars because of those uncomfortable elements but in terms of the romance there is that one problematic bit that everybody talks about which is we'll call it the kiss in the bathroom scene I guess for those of you who don't want to be spoiled about it which did seem a little bit out of character because I feel like it showed a level of aggressiveness or aggression from Michael who while he does have a little bit of an edge to him like he's not super nice super cookie cutter throughout every other instance in this book he's patient and he's kind he doesn't get angry very easily and fly off the handle and have like uncontrollable violent rages kind of thing so that did just feel a little bit weird but aside from that in terms of the romance i did really like michael he's super hot the smut in here is really well done i really liked the smut um it was a little bit cheesy 
in parts i'm not a fan of all of the um dirty talk in here and that was a little bit cringy but overall really enjoyed the smut really felt the chemistry between the two characters and i did end up having all of those swoony like good feelings towards the end of this um so yeah i did really enjoy it I, i'm going to continue on with the series because i don't know like i'm assuming that the other books aren't gonna make me feel uncomfortable i don't know because i also heard that the third book in this series like it's a series of standalone romances i've heard that the most recent one the heart principle which i got in the illumicrate afterlife box after light not afterlife is actually not a romance it's more of like a contemporary so i'm interested to see why people have been saying that and i am going to continue and hope that the rest don't make me feel as anxious as this one did i did the romantic elements i really did enjoy i just it confused me as to why it had all of these uncomfortable moments in it i will say that the whole conflict in here really relies on the miscommunication trope there's a fake dating trope in here which i understand why it's set up as fake dating but the way the fake dating is done is not really fake dating at all but i did enjoy it i don't know maybe i should have given this three stars because now i'm like yeah i really enjoyed it but i have so many things that i didn't like about it but it does still kind of feel i guess it feels like a 3.5 so we should probably call it a 3.5 but this one fulfilled the mists of solitude prompt for the magical readathon which is to read a standalone like i said it's a series of standalone romances i have twisted that prompt a little bit but literally nobody cares <laughs> and for the bookoplathon this one was to read a book with disability neurodivergence or mental health rep in it so that brings us to the end of this week's vlog next week i'm going to be trying desperately to finish my bookoplathon tbr which is mainly comprised well it's only comprised actually of the wicked villain series by katie robert so do stay tuned for that if you are at all interested but pretty decent reading week I, it went over by a day but um i got all of the things right that i wanted to but that is it for this week's vlog guys i do hope you've enjoyed it if you've made it this far if you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and i'll see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no